Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we have such an exciting planner video. We're gonna really break it down on how to plan your entire life in a binder. That's my preferred method of planning. And this is just a very exciting day because we're also launching the Milk and Honey Life Planner. If you can see, this is a printable that you can use to put in any binder and plan your entire life at a monthly, daily, weekly level. Um, it's a really special system I've been working on for so long, so I'm so excited to launch it because it's a combination of planning and journaling. I'm huge on both of those things. And this builds it in so that you can plan your day and you can also reflect back on it. So I'll go into a really detailed explanation of how this system works if you wanna get this printable and follow along the Milk and Honey Life Planner. But I'll also give really good tips for any type of planning that you might wanna do in a binder. You can use, you can print anything out. You can use plain notebook paper if you want, but the principles of planning are gonna to apply to any system that you prefer to use. So basically how we're gonna do a monthly overview, weekly and daily, turn a plain binder into the planner of your dreams. I'm so excited. Okay, so we're gonna start with our printables. So when you purchase these printables, they come in a zip file. So on most computers, all you should have to do to unzip the file is double click it and then you can access this folder. So inside the folder, there's a, a PDF of instructions on how to use the planner. There's a folder and inside the folder are three different cover options for the year 2022. It comes in a blue color scheme, a black and white color scheme if you don't want to use any colored ink, or a pink color scheme, so cute. I just wanted you to have options, so one of these will hopefully fit your aesthetic. Then there's also monthly pages to use, weekly pages to use, and daily pages to use. So the monthly pages are technically a three-page PDF, but it's meant to be printed front and back. So there's actually a fourth page on here that's just blank. That way, if you're printing numerous copies, the pages will line up correctly front and back. I'll show you more about what I mean with that in a second. But we have our monthly calendar, a monthly planning page, and a monthly reflection page, and then a blank page. So if you want to print, for instance, all 12 months of the year, you would just go and print this. Make sure you're choosing to print it double-sided, and you could go ahead and print 12 copies, and you'd have the whole year all set right then. For the weekly pages, it's the same thing. It's a three-page layout meant to be done front and back. So there's a blank page at the end so that you can print two sheets of paper front and back without having any confusion. So again, if you wanted to print maybe four weeks for the whole month, you could go ahead and do that. Again, make sure you're clicking two-sided and that way you can print the weeks out and they will be on two sheets of paper per week. And then lastly, there's a daily page. This is just one page per day. So you could print these out front and back if you wanted, again, with the two-sided button there. Okay, so we have all our pages all printed out here and ready to go, and obviously the next step is going to be putting them in some sort of a binder and having that sense of organization. So I wanna show you a few options there. So this is, I think we could say, the famous pink binder that, <laughs> that kind of started it all with the binder planner system. This is from Target, and for some horrible reason, it's never been available on their website, and it's really hard to find in stock. So I don't want to talk about just this binder because I know that's really frustrating if you live somewhere without a Target or you can't find them in stock at your store, which is really, really common. So we're not going to be using this plant, this binder. We're actually going to start a, start a clean, fresh slate in just this plain pink binder. And the first thing I'll be doing is putting the cover page for the Milk and Honey Life Planner in the front. I think this looks so cute with the pink binder. If you're more into maybe like the blue color scheme, this would also look really cute on a blue binder or I love blue and pink together. <laughs> or maybe you just like the black and white version. The options are there for you. So do whatever works best for your aesthetic. It seems silly, but it really is important that when you look at it, you're like, ooh, I just wanna open this up and like plan something. <laughs> it really helps you get in the spirit of planning. So that was the first step. The other thing that we really like about the Target binder is it has a built-in pen loop. So I'm going to be adding a pen loop. You can get these on Amazon there, or probably at most office supply stores too. They're just adhesive right here and you can stick them on anything. I use them all the time. And I actually ordered a pack of all pink ones because I'm going for like a pink monochromatic type of look in my planner for 2022, but they didn't arrive yet. <laughs> so I'm gonna use this blue one that I have on hand. And it just really helps to have a pen that you can easily grab at any time 
and check off your to-do list throughout the day. So I'm just gonna stick that on. I found these work really well. You can even peel them off and reposition them a little bit if you need to. And I'm constantly adding pen loops to my journals, my notebooks, my binders, planners, everything like that. So those are handy, definitely recommend. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up. Like I mentioned, there's an introduction guide. You don't necessarily need to print this, although you might wanna have it on hand to reference, especially as you're getting used to this planner format. Um, it has a lot of helpful tips and tricks and sort of explains the concept of the whole planner, it has sample things that you might wanna reference. So that's up to you if you wanna print that or not. And then like I mentioned, this planner printable comes with monthly, weekly, and daily pages. So if you're using a different type of planner, you might wanna disregard what I'm about to say or figure out how you can make your planning style fit into this. But I just wanna make a couple suggestions since there's monthly, weekly, and daily. One thing that could be kind of fun to organize your binder would be to have all of the months together and then either like all the weeks and days together or a weekly section and a daily section. So I'm saying that because sometimes you wanna just compare the broad strokes of your life instead of not the nitty gritty daily things, but you just wanna see like, okay, what did this month look like? Okay, what did this month look like? And compare the months um, at a glance. Sometimes that's really fun. Same thing with the week. Sometimes I just wanna say, okay, overall, how did last week go? Overall, how do I want this week to go? And you can quickly flip back and forth between different weeks. So that's one option you could use three dividers, have a monthly divider, a weekly divider, and a daily divider, and then switch in between like that. It's really gonna depend on like how your brain works, if that appeals to your brain or not. But for this planner, to keep things simple, I'm gonna have all of my planning pages together in one section. So I just need to hole punch these so I can stick them in. So I'm going to put the introduction pages first in my planner so that I have those handy. So I'm going to organize it with my monthly pages, followed by my weekly pages, followed by my daily pages. But like I said, you could use dividers and separate months, weeks, and days. You could make a tab for January, a tab for February, March, and like organize your months out that way in the binder. It's totally flexible. So I wanna start filling out this planner together with you. But first, let me explain a little bit of the concept behind the life planner. So you can see on the, the gorgeous cover that I love so much, we have these different icons. These icons represent some of the themes in the planner that it's gonna help you bring out in your own life as you're using it. So the different themes are planning, obviously planning ahead, reflecting, which is looking back on your life, because this is basically a planner and a journal in one. This is a way for you to also plan ahead and also look back so that you're not getting so swept up in just planning, 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 and forgetting to actually savor things as they happen. Uh, you know, and also learning life lessons and just looking back on things that have happened to you. Then there's a big focus on habits because that's such a strong way for building change into our lives. There's a big focus on self-care, obviously, milk and honey life, that's like what we're all about here. Making time to take care of yourself so that you can take care of others as well. Big focus on gratitude, a big focus on making memories and taking a moment to treasure your memories and record them so they're not just kind of lost in the sands of time. And a big focus on looking forward. I think having something to look forward to every day makes it so much more special as you're going through life to have some reason to be excited and something just to be positive and happy about. So those are the themes of this planner. It's a very, very purposeful planner. Every little detail is here for you to help you bring these things out in your life. You know, it's not just about like being busy. <laughs> if anything, it might be about being less busy, being more purposeful with what you commit to so that you can really savor those things, commit to them, follow through, and also take care of yourself and others and have things to look forward to, things to be grateful for, all of that good stuff. So it's very unique in that this is not just about like what you're doing and when, it's about how you're going to do things, how you're gonna set yourself up for success. But I promise all that said, it's very simple to use, very straightforward. You just go through the pages and you fill in the prompts as you get to them. So let's fill this out together. I promise it will all come together beautifully and make sense. But the basic idea is that each month 
you choose a theme and a habit to work on. Just one habit. <laughs> we really want to hone in on doing one thing at a time. It's way better to succeed at one thing at a time than to fail at a dozen things that you tried to do all at once. So I just pulled some old pages out to kind of show you some examples. Here are some pages from August. And the point of choosing a theme each month is just to kind of organize your life into sort of like an overall mood or an overall vibe and help you set the tone for your own life. Sometimes things just kind of happen to us and we're so busy and overwhelmed and swept up in it that we aren't setting the tone for our lives. Like life is setting the tone. So this is your chance each month to just be a little bit purposeful and think about like what is a theme, a theme or a mood or a vibe or an experience or a feeling that I really want to foster this month. So when you read these introduction pages, there are sample themes. If you're kind of like not sure where to go with that, um, it will start to come more naturally to you and it will start to feel so exciting to pick your theme each month. It's like such a fresh start, such a chance to be purposeful. So for example, this was August, I chose the theme light. And by that I meant everything from soaking up the sunlight, you know, the end of summer, to feeling more light on my toes and being more active, to just being light and bright and happy and joyful every day. So that was the theme I chose. I, I drew a little sunshine. I like to pick like a little icon to go with my theme. And then my daily habit was exercise daily. Um, so that was the goal. I fell short of it, but the point of this planner is that it's, it's not like, oh, if you miss a day, things are ruined. It's like, let's work on building towards the habits we wanna have, and that way any progress is success. So the first page of the monthly planner is just a blank calendar and you can use this if you want to record, you know, meetings, places you have to be, things you have to do. Or on this particular month, I used it to record my exercise because I was really working the daily habit of exercise. So this was a great place for me to fill in what I did on the days that I was able to get some exercise in. Then when you flip over to the next spread, the reason this planner is designed to be printed front and back is it all comes down to the theme of planning and reflecting. It's part planner, it's part journal. If journaling is a habit that has kind of overwhelmed you in the past, this planner is gonna completely simplify it for you and make it so easy to hone in and focus in on the important things that you need to journal about, the important lessons you need to learn, or just things you need to take a moment and slow down and appreciate. So on this August example, I wrote in at the top my theme and my habit of light and movement. The first thing you have is a habit tracker. So it's really simple and straightforward. You just like color in or check off the days that you do the habit. And this is a really interesting visual. Like with my goal of exercising daily, I started out pretty strong and then it started to wane by the end of the month. So that was really helpful for me to have that visual. And as the month went on, I just colored that in. Also at the beginning of the month, that's when you would fill in this planning side of the page. So I have things like my goals and my priorities. This month I tied them into my theme of light. So I, my goals and priorities were like to be light on my feet, doing daily movement, to be lighthearted and thankful, to celebrate the light of my life because it was Nate, my husband's birthday that month, and to eat light and savor my meals. And I was even looking for foods that felt like they had a lot of sunshine in them, like fresh produce from the farmer's market because I felt like they soaked up the sunlight and it just all kind of fell into my theme for the month and it felt so organic and good. Um, the planning page also helps you think ahead about what self-care can look like right now. Like this particular month was really, really busy for us. It was Nate's birthday, we had a lot going on. And so planning ahead allowed me to think, even though I'm so busy, I really wanna prioritize getting daily movement in or as much exercise in as I can. And if I hadn't planned that ahead, I would have absolutely thought, eh, this month is so busy, there's no time you know, for exercise. Another question it asks is what one change I can make this month. And it says one for a reason. It's really important not to overwhelm yourself with like a hundred changes you wanna make in your life. So the one change I was focusing on was on my theme and it was lighten up and don't take life too seriously, just have fun and play because I wanted to feel really overwhelmed by how much I had to do, and then I realized it's fun stuff. It's like celebrating my husband's birthday and trying to enjoy the last rays of summer, and I just wanted to soak up all of that light. Then there's also a space to say one thing I can prove to myself, 
and what I am most looking forward to. I just think having something to look forward to makes the hugest difference in our mindset. So these little icons correspond to those themes that I told you about, and you're going to see them recurring all throughout this planner. So that's all you have to do to plan your month. Set up your monthly calendar page however you want, and fill in your monthly planner page. The second page is the reflect page, and you come back to this at the end of the month and you look back at how the month went. So you can think of this reflect side of the page as a journal. It's going to kind of guide you towards a little guided journaling experience. It's very simple, very doable. You know, we have limited space here so that you're not writing 10 pages and just feeling really obligated to record every little piece of your life. It's more about re realizing what matters and putting that down so that you can move on and have a fresh start. So at the end of this month, I was looking back and it encourages you to reflect on your memories, accomplishments, and celebrations. So I was things that were memorable were from Nate's birthday mostly, things that we did with him, also like time I got by myself by focusing on exercise like I did that month, and it just helped me kind of boil down some of the most special memories. It also encourages you to look for insights gained and life lessons. Sometimes we don't see the life lessons that are like right in front of us. So for instance, with this month when I looked back and I saw I started out so strong with exercising every day and then it fizzled out, that kind of showed me it's easy to stick with a habit in the beginning and then you kind of lose speed. So in the following months, I was more aware of that and I was able to kind of set myself up to really follow through in the second half of the month. And that was really insightful. There's also a place here where you can calculate how many days you achieved your habit. So I counted up, I did my habit 21 days. Um, if I was going for 100% perfection, I would have stopped right here. I missed that day of exercise and I would have been like, oh well, it's ruined, you know, forget it. I'll just do nothing the rest of the month. But I knew I wasn't going for 100% perfection. I was going for just any progress. And that kept me going and kept me showing up. And as a result, I might look at that and be like, oh, daily exercise? I didn't do good at all. But percentage-wise, 21 days out of 31 days in the month, that's 68% of the days that I exercised. And I felt really good once I looked at it that way because it's like more than half of the days I was showing up and getting that movement in. Whereas if I had quit here on day nine, <laughs> it would have been a very small percentage of the month that I actually exercised. So it's just a new way of looking at habits where you don't have to beat yourself up if you don't have 100% perfection. You can just take any progress as good progress. Maybe you did something 0% last week, and this week you did it 1%, 2%. That's still more than you were doing it before. And then of course, there's a, so a place for gratitude, looking back on your month so you can remember what was special and what you were grateful for. And then we have like a little note section at the bottom. So I put a couple quotes that inspired me with my theme of light. And I also put some songs that were inspiring me. I had a little playlist with the theme of light and I would listen to it on my little morning jogs. And it honestly just made this such a special month. Like I really felt aware of this theme of bringing more light into my life in all the different ways that I possibly could. And I will never forget it, it's so special. So that's just an example of how you can use the monthly pages. So let's go ahead and set up the December pages right now. We're actually like halfway through December while I'm recording this, but for the purpose of the planner video, I wanted you guys to fill it out with me so you could kind of see how my month will shape up. So my theme for December is gratitude. I think it's a perfect month to really focus on being thankful for what you already have. Um, sometimes there's like a lot of consumerism that happens in December and it's nice to just focus on what you do have being enough and enjoy that. And then my daily habit, I'm calling it savor the season. Basically, you could also say the habit of mindfulness or just being present. And that's just my way of reminding myself, like, I love December. I love Christmas time. Like I keep talking about in my Vlogmas series, I just really don't want the holidays to like blow past me and I haven't done anything to appreciate or enjoy them while I was in it. And you know, we gotta wait another long month until 11 long months until we get back to Christmas time next year. So I wanna enjoy it now while I'm here and be present and mindful and yeah, savor the season. Okay, so like I showed you in my August example, I was using this more as detail on my habit so I could see exactly what I did for my habit each day. Since my current habit is savoring the season, that's like a little bit subjective. It's not a really tangible, specific thing. 
And also because this is just such a busy month, I'm rather choosing to use this monthly calendar to see at a bird's eye view places I have to be or like calls I have to be on at a specific time. That way when there is a blank day, I'm like, ooh, okay, that's a day I really need to seize where I don't have any outside specific obligations on that day and I can use it towards my goals and like progress on things I need to do. So that's how I'll be filling in December. Then we flip to, let me zoom you out a little bit. Then we flip to the next page, which like I said, this is planning on the left side that will fill out at the beginning of the month. And this is reflecting that will fill out at the end of the month. So I'm going to go ahead and write in the month, December, my habit or my theme of gratitude, and then my habit to savor the season. So since that is a more subjective habit, um, my habit tracker just kind of comes down to whether I feel like I'm making a point to slow down at some moment during that day. Um, I'm doing Vlogmas, so that is really helping me. But overall, it's kind of up to me to just take a moment and like be present and have that moment of mindfulness. So that's how I'm tracking it is based on mindfulness. The next section here is planning out the month's goals and priorities. So in the August example, I really tailored it to my theme and I used it as a way to kind of drive home my theme for the month, like all the ways to bring light to my life. Um, this month, like I said, it's such a busy month. I'm really focusing on planning the actual to-do <laughs> productivity that needs to happen. But I'm also keeping in mind that feeling of gratitude and presence and mindfulness. The next question is what will self-care look like? So this is really important to help you think ahead in the beginning. Like if it's going to be really busy, how are you going to fit in some self-care? Because in my experience, when I don't is when things tend to hit the fan and the whole month kind of just doesn't wind up going how I had hoped because I'm not making time to take care of myself. I'm just trying to take care of everything else. Next question is one change I can make this month. And for me this month, that's taking things one step at a time. The next little section, little prompt here is one thing I want to prove to myself. So one thing I want to prove to myself in December is that I can do everything on a very full to-do list and a very full calendar, but still, like I keep saying, slow down and savor the season. I want to prove that busy times don't have to feel like just hurricanes and tornadoes that just hit us so hard. It can feel more like a chance to actually be all the more present in the midst, sort of like being in the eye of the storm rather than being swept up in it. So yeah, that's a good way to put that. Sometimes it feels like that's not possible. So this month I want to prove to myself that that is possible. And this is just a chance to kind of start practicing the habit of keeping promises to yourself. So depending on what your theme is for the month, that might be a good source of inspiration for this. Like I want to prove to myself that I can show up and exercise more than half of the days in the month, or I can be grateful no matter what's going on in my life. It's just a chance to kind of set out to show yourself something and then follow through and build self-trust as you're going through the year. And then the last one, we have this really cute little crystal ball icon, and that's for things that we're looking forward to. And so it's this planner is always going to guide you through that. Um, even if you think there's nothing to look forward to in your current life setup, we talk about it in these introduction pages. There are some sample things that you can look forward to and think about. Um, you can always create something special for yourself. You can create it for free. <laughs> you can create it no matter what's going on. It just might take more or less effort depending on what season of life you're in. So then this next page, like I said, is for the end of the month. We'll come back, we'll fill this in with our reflections, and that will make it something we can always look back on whenever we're thinking, oh yeah, December was a really good month. Like, what did I do that was working so well that month? Or what was so special? You can always come back to this page. So the next thing is the weekly page layout. So I'll just show you my weekly page from last week. Uh, the first thing that you have here is like an overview page. It's got blanks for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And this just helps you kind of see your week at a glance. So you could use this space to specifically look at your theme and your habit and how you're going to tie those things in. Or you can use this like an overview of what's actually going on just to kind of plan the week at a glance that way. That's what I did last week. I had a lot of places that were like physical places to be and things to do. So this page showed me at a glance like where I was going to have some free time to work on what I needed to work on and where I needed to show up 
on a call or out of a certain place at a certain time like I was <laughs> supposed to. So that's the purpose of that page. Then we had the planning page. So I filled this out at the beginning of last week. And again, it just kind of leads you through planning your week. So the first thing at the top is where you write in the month, the theme, and the habit. And this is a little mini habit tracker. As you go through the week, you can check these off. And that makes it easier when you're looking back on your monthly page. This habit tracker here, you can copy over from the week. So whichever place you prefer, but I like to track things in as many places as possible so I can check things off as many times as possible. So I track my habit here and then I transfer it over to the month. Then there's a place to identify your priorities for the week. And I really like this because I think of it as if nothing else got done but these three things, this week will still be a success. Like really drill down, like what is the most important highest priority things? So I was really trying to get my gifts sent out, my work deadlines met, and follow through on Vlogmas. So those are my top priorities. So these to-do items kind of break down my top priorities to make sure all the little steps get done. Or if I just have something else random that needs to get done, I can put it here and also choose which day I'm going to do it. So that reminds me to copy it over to my daily to-do list when it's time. Then it asks, how can I set myself up for success? So this is so helpful at the beginning of the week to think, look at that week overview and be like, wow, I've got a lot of places I need to be at certain times. So I'm going to set myself up by getting really organized in the beginning of the week and not being like constantly behind the ball all the rest of the week. Then there's the question, how can I give to others? So I really like asking this. I think it makes it, it kind of puts everything in perspective and reminds you sometimes life feels so serious and we take everything so seriously. But what's really important, you know, is like showing up for the people we love or helping others and also taking care of ourselves so we can do that. So that's why we have these two questions. How can I give to others and how can I care for myself? So this week for others, I was delivering cookies and I was doing my usual volunteering and that kind of helped me put in perspective. Yeah, I feel busy, but the things I'm busy with are things I'm choosing and I hope that they're making a difference for other people too. And then for myself, I looked at this calendar and I was like, I'm going to want a little bit of like me time. I'm a little bit of an introvert, especially on this day when we had two parties. So I plan to take that morning for myself. So I'm going to be super overwhelmed. And then of course you can fill in the things you're looking forward to. I had my movie date with my girls and the Milk and Honey Club. Got to see really old friends at a Christmas party this week, which was so much fun. And making things special by doing Vlogmas every day. So I'm... At the end of the week is when I fill out this reflect page. I normally do it on Sundays where I will reflect on the last week and then plan the week coming up. But I just saved this to do the reflection with you guys. So my little habit of savor the season. I can look at my habit tracker and see Monday and Friday kind of just went by like a whirlwind and I didn't feel like I savored or made time to savor on those days. So I completed it five out of seven days. Like I said, that habit is a little bit subjective. It's not that black and white to track it. Um, most habits can be way easier to track and less subjective, you know, like flossing or going for exercise, just something like, did you do it? Yes or no. Then I'm looking back on my memories, accomplishments and celebrations. So memories were seeing friends that I haven't seen in two years, some of them. An accomplishment was keeping up with Vlogmas, even though, honestly, it was a bit touch and go at some points. And then celebrations, got to go to several Christmas parties, celebrating this season. And then a couple other things that I just want to keep as memories. Selling my beloved Mustang was a little bit of a bittersweet moment this past week. And I had so many times laughing with friends. I just want to remember all the joy and laughter that I got to have this week. And with my husband who always makes me laugh. Then insights gained and life lessons. So this is again that moment to encourage you to actually think back like is, is life trying to teach me anything right now? Like is there some lesson here? And looking back on this past week I feel like life has taught me that as long as I can set myself up for success in the beginning, busy times can go really smoothly and just be fun. It doesn't have to feel so serious, like I'm white knuckling it the whole time. So I'm going to say prepping in advance. And then we have one way I can improve next week. And it purposefully only asks you one way. Because my instinct, and I think a lot of other perfectionists' instinct, might be to write like 10 ways that you can improve and just completely overwhelm yourself and give yourself like 
a really harsh lesson on all the things you need to do better. So we're not doing that. We're not being perfectionists. We're not being hard on ourselves. This is just a place to kind of lightly ask yourself, what is one way I can improve? So one way I can improve next week, looking back on this, the first thing that comes to my mind is not to overbook myself. I really wanted to say yes to everything last week, and I did, and some of that was so great, but also some of it was a little bit too much for a girl that's been in lockdown, you know? <laughs> like, it was, it was a lot in one week. Sometimes when you just get in the habit of saying yes to everything, you're doing things that don't even necessarily matter. And then we have a space for gratitude. Every section of this planner is like gratitude, 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 because that is truly the secret sauce to life. It makes everything so special and so much more, puts your heart in just such a better place. So gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. I'm just gonna go ahead and like spew out a bunch of things that come to mind. And lastly, there's another little note section here. I will usually wind up filling this in when I'm planning the week, if there's like a quote or a mantra or something I wanna remember, um, or even just like somewhere I need to jot a phone number down or anything like that. I didn't wind up using it this past week, so I don't know, let's just draw a heart. <laughs> and then we're gonna get to the daily page. So here's how the daily page works. The top half is the planning section and the bottom half is the reflecting section. So again, the same theme of this whole planner, you take the beginning of something to plan it and then afterward you look back and you reflect on it. So here's the example, what is this from? This is from yesterday. Yesterday was a Sunday, so it was a little bit of an unusual day. The other nice thing about a printable planner is you don't have to print 365 pages, you know? There might be slower days on the weekends that you don't need to plan at all, and you can just go with the flow those days. Since we did have a lot going on, I was using my planner pages every single day recently. So here's just an example of Sunday. Um, again, filling out our theme and our habit at the top. It might feel like a lot of repetition when you're writing these things down, but I find that really helps drill it in. Um, I've had other techniques of planning where at the beginning of the month I set a goal or a theme, and I'm like, yeah, this, this month's gonna be all about gratitude. And then I don't see it or look at it again for the whole month until I get to the next month, and I'm like, oh, shoot, yeah, last, week was, last month was supposed to be about gratitude. So for me, writing that down every single day constantly reminds me. It's kind of like when you're in school and you're trying to remember something and so your teacher has you write it down a bunch of times. It really drills at home. And every single day I'm like, okay, yes, gratitude. I chose that for a reason and I really want to keep that top of mind. Same thing with the habit. Like, yes, I'm really working on the habit of presence and mindfulness. So I'm going to keep writing it down, keep reminding myself. And we love check marks here in this family. <laughs> so there's a little check mark for your daily habit once it's done. Like yesterday, I started the day out with a, mo a moment of me time and slowing down and savoring. So I went ahead and checked off that I had done that habit. Um, then the day plan works like this. You have your priorities, just three. And it's the same thing like when you're planning your week. Like what if nothing else got done today, but these three things? It really forces you to limit yourself. In the past, I have had daily planner pages where the to-do list takes up like the whole page and it's like 30 items. And I found that that wasn't working because I wasn't prioritizing. I was doing like whatever I wanted off of that list and then pushing things I didn't want to do day after day after day. So this encourages you to drill down and only write down the important things that you have to do. So since yesterday was like a fun Sunday, my priorities were actually two parties and vlogmas. <laughs> so that was kind of a fun day. So again, my to-do list items were kind of a little bit different, like defrosting cookies to bring to these parties, but also editing and posting the vlogmas video, um, refilling my vitamins, mailing out cards I've been working on. So that's just like, you know, pretty straightforward priorities and to-dos. And this is where you can kind of transfer over things from your week plan, um, making sure that things you need to do this week are getting copied over to the actual day that you need to do it. And there's also these questions to help you plan. So gratitude, gratitude, gratitude. What am I grateful for? Yesterday I was able to think I'm grateful for friends and family, safe get together, sunshine, like things that I knew would be happening that day were at the top of my mind. What am I looking forward to? This is a question we ask ourselves every single day. I really want to push you guys and myself to find something to look forward to every day. And it can be so simple. Some days it is like the thought of crawling back into bed tonight or like 
If you have something to do that you're really dreading, maybe the only thing you're looking forward to is the feeling of driving home from that thing, <laughs> like knowing it'll be done. Um, but hopefully there are more joyful um, little moments we can create for ourselves every day. Like, I'm looking forward to taking a bath tonight. I'm looking forward to asking my husband for a neck rub. I'm looking forward to just playing with my dogs on my lunch break, stuff like that. Little things, it can be free things, but it gives you something to look forward to and makes the days feel less dreary when you're really in a busy or a hard time of life. So what are you looking forward to? And then your self-care. So asking yourself this every day reminds you that you need to be taking care of yourself every day. And it can be a really small thing. It's not gonna be a big thing every single day. It might be something really small, like flossing my teeth tonight and thinking, I did a good job today, you know? <laughs> or something like taking time to call a friend. Again, there are examples here in the front in these introductory pages. If you need some help kind of thinking about what you can do for self-care, we have ideas. This whole YouTube channel is full of ideas. So that's what I fill out in the morning. Then this next section is reflect. So you can either fill this out at night. It's like a nice way to close out your day. Or what I more often do is in the morning. So every morning I'll sit down and fill out my plan for the day. But first I'll look back on the day before and reflect and fill out that section. So yesterday my reflection section was looking back on the highlights, like being at this fun outdoor party, having dinner with some loved ones, and laughing so hard my cheeks hurt, always a good feeling. Another question we have here, this is a really dear to my heart question, what made me smile today? And my entire childhood, my dad would ask us that at the dinner table every single night, What he'd go around and say, what made everybody smile that day? And it's just such a sweet, question. It's very nostalgic for me since my dad would ask us that, but it's a really good way to kind of focus on the positive and find something positive. And I also especially like it since this planner is like a journal. To me, it's like a way of bottling up all of my smiles and like keeping them and being able to hold on to them and not just losing them to the moment, to the sand of time. Um, actually remembering why I smiled. So writing down something really specific, you know, something funny that your pets did, something beautiful you saw in nature, whatever it might be, it helps you notice when you're smiling. And I know that sounds silly, but sometimes we let the good times go by and we just take them for granted. Or if we're in a really hard time, we feel like there is nothing good. There is no reason to smile. Um, but when you start looking for reasons to smile, you will find them. <laughs> You'll be smiling more than ever. And it just really creates some good feelings and um, helps you kind of savor and find those special things. Okay, then we ask ourselves, when was I at my best? And this is really helpful to look back and see like moments of flow, moments when you felt like you were really like vibing, <laughs> you're really getting done what needed to be done or just really felt like the best version of yourself. Taking a time to notice that is a way of celebrating yourself for having that good moment and also being aware of like, oh, okay, so I did really well with that afternoon work session. Maybe I should schedule more of those. Things like that kind of help you be aware of that. So I felt like I was at my best because I took some time for myself to like charge up before going to two different social events. And sometimes I can feel a little bit drained after that. So this way I charged up in advance and I felt good about that. Then we also have the question, when did I feel unrest? So this helps you in the same way. It helps you identify maybe things that didn't feel your best, that didn't feel good. So you can either work around those things, find solutions, or just set yourself up to not go through something like that again. Um, me personally, I've always dealt with anxiety most of my life, and I find this question really helps me with anxiety to pinpoint things that are triggers. Kind of notice, like, maybe if bad feelings start to snowball at some point in the day, and we don't notice until it's like out of control, this will help you kind of pinpoint where things started to go a little bit off track so you can kind of correct that in the future and set yourself up for smoother sailing. So sometimes it'll be something specific, like somebody said something triggering or something bad happened. Um, yesterday <laughs> I got home at 10 p.m. and I still hadn't even edited the video I needed to do. So I felt a little bit of unrest at that time. But it was just a reminder that in the future, if I can work that in earlier in the day, I won't have that stress at night to get everything done. And it's not a, not a chance to beat yourself up or a chance to dwell on the negative. It's just a chance to be like, okay, yeah, this didn't work for me. Let's move on accordingly and no big deal. 
And then the last thing is what is one way, just one way I can improve tomorrow. So again, I don't want this to become a place where it's like a hundred things that you did quote unquote wrong. It's just a place to be like, yeah, what's one doable thing that's gonna make tomorrow even better than today was. So I noticed that when I get home, I don't feel like doing anything else. So if I have a video I have to edit, I need to do it before I leave the house. And it's just as simple as that. It's like, I planned the day, I looked back on it, and now I'm ready to move forward to a fresh, clean slate and plan the next day. So that's the whole system. It's very straightforward. I, I know it seems like a lot of moving parts, but when you really look at it, it's just like that monthly overview, planning your month and reflecting on your month. Weekly overview, planning your week and reflecting on your week. And then the daily overview, planning and reflecting. And I've been using this system for about the past year on all the different design <laughs> evolutions of it. And it has just helped me be so much more purposeful as I choose a theme and I work on one habit at a time and just like kind of collecting. I feel like I'm just like collecting my time as I go through the year and like making this little collection of themes, collection of habits, collection of memories and smiles and like things I really just want to hold on to. So it's been a very special planning system for me and I really hope it can be special for you. It can really help you to focus on gratitude, self-care, caring for others, looking forward to things, finding and creating reasons for joy every single day. It's gonna build it all in for you on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. So you don't have to think about anything. You can just put it on cruise control and really enjoy honing in on habits and reaping the rewards. One other thing I wanted to mention is that if you have a different size of planner you like to use, you can also play with how you print this out in the dimensions. So for instance, on my computer with a Mac, you go to layout and you can choose like two pages per sheet. So that would print this daily page at a half page size. Um, so for example, like I have the happy planner and if I wanted to add it to my happy planner insert, I can print it at a half page size, trim it to fit and they make these laminated hole punched pages. So with the happy planner, you can just insert this into your planner wherever you want and check it off as you go through the day. So that way you wouldn't have to print numerous of ones of these either. You could use a dry erase marker or a wet erase marker and just fill out your plan for the day and reflect on your day and then like wipe it clean and start fresh the next day. So that would be another way to use these printables. Or if you have um, like a six ring agenda or a certain size agenda, you can print the sheet out at that size and hole punch it so it goes into that sized agenda that you have. So thank you so much for hanging in there with me. We had to really go through the system kind of page by page. I really wanted to give you guys a close zoomed in look at what it is like to plan your life on the monthly, weekly, and daily level with this kind of emphasis on self-care and gratitude and looking forward and reflecting back and all of the things that kind of help us build memories and make your planner not just another system for like busyness because we have a lot of that in our lives but also making your planner a way to capture memories and preserve them and boil them down to like the really special little nuggets that you're going to want to keep in your heart forever and it'll be actually fun and special and meaningful to flip back through the old pages of this planner and look back on what made you smile and what was special and all of that goodness. So huh, I'm so excited about this. I hope you're excited. If you want to get your hands on the Milk and Honey Life Planner, it will be in the link in the description box below this video. And even if not, I hope you're inspired just to plan your life in whatever way works for you. You can use some of these ideas and apply them to plain notebook paper if you want. Just this, the sky is the limit of planning and all that really matters is how it's making you feel and how it's helping you cherish your days, your weeks, and your months because life is so special and I just wish it to be full of gratitude and self-care and special memories and smiles for you. <laughs> and that's why we made this planner. So thank you so much for watching. Hit subscribe if you would like to see future planning videos from me. There's always gonna be more of those to come. And in the meantime, tomorrow we'll be back to our regularly scheduled programming of Vlogmas. So lots of good stuff going on, lots to look forward to and record in your planners. 
And if you do want to get this, it's a printable that you can have instantaneously. So you can start planning this way today, right now. The couple weeks leading up to Christmas can feel so much more organized and calm and purposeful and special while we're making these memories in the holiday season. Um, or if you're watching this video later, you can always get it. You can always start planning in the middle of the year, in the middle of the week. It doesn't have to be Monday, January 1st. It can be any time. So please enjoy. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.